fucking way. Meet the artists, you can hurry up and wait. We a real big family, can you relate? AC on the drums, mate. Dig is out of great, mate. Bless the mic and make tunes all day. Words from the artists, peep the combo. All my friends is cold as Fargo. No matter if you black, white, brown, or caramel. Talented and gifted, modern marvels. This is for the rock stars, hip hop, boom bap, emo, screw jab, indie, blue jets. What you working on? What have you done? Tell us your story in three, two, one. Hurry up and wait. That's a Talking about Roger Waters and David Gilmore's voice versus yeah. Getty Lee's voice. It's good. good point. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. That's a good point, though. <laughs> I just swear. That would start a fight. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, it's going to definitely start a fight. <laughs> okay, let's get to um, Chris. This is how it worked. This is how it worked out. So I'm sorry that these are two of your choices. It's all good, man. I, I, it's but, my fault. Uh, so I'll your take recent. It. A- your recent add-in of the boss versus Jimi Hendrix. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So different. So, so the thing that's hard about yeah, this very is, different. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it worked out that way on this, this, on this one, because we have such a, we didn't have a whole lot of, uh, pop pop groups when we chose our eight there wasn't a whole lot of pop so pop got thrown in there and gets kind of teamed up against somebody that maybe they shouldn't go you know like billy joel versus blondie wasn't really yeah yeah you know. for me though it's like um we, yeah, we all cool. know how amazing Anyways, but yeah, how boss, boss of jimmy hendrix impactful that Jimi hendrix is um but he was taken from us well, really early in right the 70s uh, that's a good question that was like, his t- impact t- in t- the t- 70s though was 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 it was it was he really impacted later on in life after he had passed away and people came back and were like, "Holy shit!" Like, yeah, good point. That motherfucker was actually really fucking good, mm-hmm. and he. I don't, I'm not sure if he got, he earned the respect in the '70s. Unfortunately, I think all of his fame and whatnot came after that, and people were like, "Holy shit!" Like, well, I'm I'm, I'm actually looking that up right now. Tower, you know, like, so, yeah. um, uh. Are You Experienced was dropped in 67. Bold as Love in 60. Also, uh, Axis, Bold as Love, 67. Electric Lady Land was in 68. Band of Gypsies was was uh, 70s. Great. Like, he dropped that in 1970. So, 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 so maybe that was the only album he put saying, out in the 70s? Just the like one? Hap- yeah, I okay, feel like so, exactly what you said, except instead of the 80s, it was the 70s. All right, so then so let's let's so let's pivot then. off of the hype of the 60s and in the he 70s. Should be, may, or maybe he should be sense. in the 60s. Should he be in the 60s then? And we just take him out and put, and then it becomes no, Ramones versus right, the man. boss? You, you, that's what I'm saying. You, we was, take him out and then we put him in the 60s and then no, we do Ramones versus the in boss. In the 70s. Okay, true. Like based off of. Good point. You know, you, you can go either way. Nah. Well, you can go either way. It's, oh, I mean, wait. if no, we no, have to no, make no, the decision, no. if we do have no, to make no, no, this, like, yeah. I'm not questioning that. Mm-hmm. Hold up. Yeah, go hold ahead. Up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. For what TJ said, yeah, what exactly what TJ said is accurate to the T, except instead of the 80s, the impact was felt in the 70s. Mm-hmm. The oh, late 70s, so, yeah. Like, I would say like 77, so, 78 is when he probably got the respect that he started. He needed Agreed. Or he should have gotten. Agreed, and that's why he's that's why he should stay in the seventies. Okay. Because I feel like if you put him in the sixties, like it does him a disservice because his time in the sixties was garbage. Here, it yeah. wasn't until he went to Europe. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't until he left the U.S. that he blew up, and that's where like his impact was thus felt here. The late seventies, by the time music came from there here. Yeah. So yeah, so I was like, I think you were right. I just think it it happened in the seventies. So I think he belongs there in the seventies For sure. personally. And you know Bruce, but then this is also it's Bruce Springsteen, but it's also the E Street Band, and so I think that is something that is one of those iconic bands as well, you know. And so then the the uh, we talked about earlier some of these other ones where it's hard it's hard sometimes because of the the you look at the the discography and, and the the work and there's so much work and and Bruce is still doing it to this day. Um, so as much as I love Jimmy and as much as I just wish we, you know, we had him longer. Can you imagine if we had Jimmy now, like in as an old man, like doing, can you imagine? I don't know if he would have been able to make his way through just being the musician, 
BB King, bro. Like he'd be, you know, a different version of BB King, right? Wouldn't wouldn't she say? Uh, kind of, sort. I mean, it's an impossible. It's an impossible scenario. Um, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I, just, I don't. I don't. I don't know what his wave would have been. Right. Like, Where he would have gone with had it? Had he had he evolved yeah. throughout the seventies, because he would have had to like develop into like somewhat of. It depends if he wanted to go. If he had came back here and was accepted by the African American community, he would have had to like do some type of funk, some type of disco. That's why I love Band and of Gypsies. I don't think he would have. You know, I don't think he would have been able to do that. <laughs> I, I disagree because I, when I think of Jimmy, I think of people like Gary Clark Jr. Mm -hmm. Like Alad. You know, even though Gary is considered just a. Well, a lot of people just consider him as a blues player, but right. it's like you look at the range of his music, it's just like he does hip hop. He's on a lot of hip hop stuff. He's mm -hmm. on a lot of like, you know, other genres. So I think Jimmy would have probably found his way. With you think so? Um, I actually, and that's the other thing. I just heard that he was like, and this is a very common thing at this point, but he was really hard to work with. Like, I don't know if, I don't know if you could have turned that switch off to do that. Mm. True. Yeah. Then you, you got to think about it's an impossible. It, it, it is. And it's, but it's fun to think about how like other, like how the eighties would have impacted him. You know what I mean? That's what's fun is like to like how, how, what would, yes. Yeah. Or hip hop, you know, like can you imagine like what hip hop would have done to him and like, wow, like what he could have done with it. Like you're saying, like, that's crazy to think about, but you're yeah. right. We can't, it's impossible. Again, I will say it was, it was a lot of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything. <laughs> Yeah. So all that said, I, I think I'm going to go with boss, oh, the boss report. You're going with the boss. I'm going with the boss. Gentlemen, hey, balls in y'all's court. I'm sorry. AC, I'm sorry. With Jimmy, Jimmy, I'm going with Jimmy. Jimmy. You know, so, like for Jimmy to do what he did at the age that he did it. That's, right. that's just, that's unbelievable. Like Take that man, for sure. Got it. Kinda, and one of the big things was like, like, we say this about Dallas culture and Dallas musicians a lot. Like the easy thing is we take the, the Badu approach where she may not have been accepted here for what she did, but as soon as she left here, she was accepted by the whole world. And Jimmy was, I'd say one of the first ones that I remember hearing that story about where his music wasn't accepted here. It wasn't as hot as it should have been here. And he went overseas and, legitimately recreated himself with the same sound and all of a sudden he was a rock star yeah. and kind of set an example for a lot of musicians going forwards that's kind of understated in my opinion you know what? and i think that's the musicians like like that's that's i feel like that's the the artist's story of many mm -hmm. artists any like, artist any artist and that's, i don't know if those if that wasn't the case boss i'm just like i know for a fact that was the case with jimmy right and that's a big part of my well, for me so jimmy. for me it's it's yeah i'm going jimmy as well but it's not to discredit bruce i think for me personally i don't i don't resonate to bruce springsteen's 70s music like for me my mom was a huge bruce springsteen fan growing up as a child she she was raised in the seven or you know was a teenager and whatnot through the seventies. So that's, that's her time period, but definitely me hearing Jimmy, I mean, uh, hearing Bruce Springsteen, the boss was definitely all eighties. I mean, born, born in the USA is probably, well, there's three songs on that album that probably get played at pretty much every July 4th party. Yeah. That's a pretty fair thing to say, right. Or pretty much any time that there's anything that has to do with the love of this country or whatnot, it's, usually going to be a Bruce Springsteen song just because of that one album. I want one of those I mean, really for me, it's the 80s. I, I, 80s. I think that we'll be talking about Bruce Springsteen in the 80s when we talk about 80s eventually. That's where I think he'll, he'll have more prominence. I think what he did in the 80s is way more prevalent than the three or four CDs he put out in the 70s. That's just me. So, yeah. I, I'm also, sorry, Chris, we are going with Hendrix. You know what's great? That matters to you because they were both your choices. When I think of Bruce Springfield, I immediately think of Jersey Shore. <laughs> 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 I immediately think of Jersey Shore. I mean, Shore. that's where he's from. He is okay, from New Jersey. See, that's what I'm saying. I didn't know that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Springsteen. I mean, I think they were the the first album they put out as a band was like 
greetings from Asbury, New Jersey, Asbury, New Jersey, or something like that. Oh, yeah, Park. Asbury Park, New Jersey. Yep. Yeah, reminds me of like home of Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam. <laughs> he reminds me of the. I show. You know that it's kind of crazy. Time I hear his singing, like I like. Oh, well, that's the only way I knew that album. Yeah. The only way I knew that album was because that was the finisher move of uh, the Bam Bam Bigelow. Greetings from Asbury Park. Yep. Dang. Oh, really? Dang. So, yeah. Yep. Rand, Rand, see? Wrestling and music go hand in hand sometimes. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. So, moving on. Real quick, we're gonna, we're, we've uh, got... Oh, yeah. We only got five done, guys. We're, we're kind of lacking on this. All right. So David Bowie. We're doing, I think we're doing all right. David Bowie Wait, sorry. and Elton John. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I think it's a no-brainer. I don't know really why this is even a question. All right. We'll say it at the same uh, time. I, 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 one, two, Elton three. John. David Bowie. No, 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 John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie. David. Really? Yeah, no. no respect. Way. Mad respect for Elton John, 100%. But David Bowie, bro. Ziggy Stardust, uh, bro. Are you guys serious? Wow, that's crazy. I thought there would be a way more bigger argument about this. That's. As a singer songwriter. Like yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I just think from a big band, like a band perspective, like yeah, that was definitely Bowie. Like Bowie was the, Bowie was a rock star. I, I, I and you just knew yeah, it exactly. Like he couldn't walk into any room. Was it Elton John the same way? I mean, for sure, in a flamboyant way. And maybe it just maybe it's a sensibility like this a sensibility of the fact that. It's it's led by piano. I don't know if that's it. Maybe 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 that's what it is. I don't know. For me, it is maybe a little bit. Like I love the piano, but I just feel like, um, like Ziggy just or David Bowie's music just really spoke to me a little bit more. You know, like I love. There's so many iconic songs from Elton. Though. Don't get me wrong, Tiny Dancer. Well, you know, so he Rocket released Man. twelve uh, studio albums in the seventies. Rocket Man. Elton John released twelve albums. Six of it. Six yeah. of them made number one on the Billboard two hundred. <sighs> All right. Well, you know uh, what? I I can't dispute that. Like, I I would glad I would change my pick on that one. Like, that is a like six of those made number one on the charts. Fifty percent of the albums he put out in the seventies hit number one. I, record sales speaks, man. Six singles made number one. I didn't realize. Yeah, but you, you when you talk about David Bowie, you're talking about an icon that 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 uh, kind of. Do you think Elton John is? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like. I just feel like um, he's the number, he's like one of the best selling musicians internationally of all time. I'm just saying, imagine For sure. if, we had, if, if we had Robert on the show, what would he say? I, I yeah, you know, I don't know, man. That's a good question. I'd say I have no say idea. No brainer, and he would go with Elton John. I think. I mean, well, yeah, that. because of because of the numbers I just put up. I, I mean, you because that's that's. In my head, I did I didn't know that Elton John had that big of an impact. Personally, I knew well, Bowie really had eleven big of an impact, albums, but I didn't in the 70s. To have six albums drop at number one. Mm-hmm. I'm saying to have a to have six albums drop in like and reach number one, like yeah. So David Bowie never more had a number one album and are affected than I than I knew. <laughs> I learned something today. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. True that. Like I would I would change my pick based off of that fact. Uh, so are we now tied? Stick, now is it two two? Yeah, we're tied. To it? Not changing it, man. Like okay, yeah. yeah I mean, we're talking about 20th century here, man. Like, <laughs> like God, <laughs> you know, Elton, mad respect, but like that's as a kid, that's all I used to like see, like growing up. Like, I I didn't even know anything about Elton John until I probably turned what 17. 17 or 18. Wow. Yeah. I had to hear so you much. Lion King? For sure. I mean, yeah. You know. That was around the time of, you know. I didn't know. Young. I didn't know it was Elton John until, like, oh, okay. you know. But, right. Like, no, that's, that was the 90s, anyways. We're talking about the 70s. So. Right. Life on Mars, you know. Um, Rebel, Rebel. I mean. So, according to that, to that list of top40weekly.com, David Bowie was. Uh, 
number 13 on the list. Just to let you know, Elton John was number four. I thought the other band was four. How are they both four? Uh, maybe it was three. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, uh, but like uh, also. Uh, Pink, Floyd, Pink Floyd was four. Elton John was three. Okay. Wow. You're better. Okay. But. Wow. Uh, again, just for me, taste wise, I, I love uh, rock. I love punk. I love new wave. I love all those things. And those are the Godfather. All that shit is David Bowie. All right. So listener vote again. Two, two. Cool. And it was basically style for me. I got yeah, style too. That's what I was trying to say about the being an icon, like style icon. Not that Elton John wasn't either, but it was more costumey. Uh, like David Bowie influenced fashion. So I don't. I just think like when, when I think of like an approach of who's still prominent today, it's hard to dispute numbers. One's dead, but... <laughs> One's dead. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. One's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, still, but the okay. numbers still speak. Who's in Zoolander? I mean, was it Elton John or was it David Bowie? <laughs> I don't know if y'all knew, so David and Elton, they had like a 40-year kind of like battle. No like shit. They, yep. they didn't like each other at all. Wow. <laughs> nope, they did not. I believe that. Dude. It's also why I put them together on this. I love that. That's a great pairing. Bracket. <laughs> That's cool. Like I, I, yeah. Damn. All right. Six Tower of Power Joy one. Division. Boy, bro. I just want fucker, one dude. to get charted. <laughs> Man. I just want one album to get charted. I don't even need to make like number one. Like I could be the last of the list, and I'm be like, I made a list. <laughs> 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 I want one. I'm not even greedy. I just want one. <laughs> so okay again this is um it's hard because okay. pop punk uh new wave all that stuff like this uh, uh this is a band that took uh punk to the next level and and elevated it and and all the the, the emo and all of the uh new wave and all the, the cool things that we get to to hang out and listen to today would never have happened if it wasn't for a band like this like new order is 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 so important to and new it's order. it's yeah important because like you love emo do you not love emo you I wouldn't have had it learning, you wouldn't have had it learning, if ian chris if even curtis emo. wasn't here you would not have had it it would not have existed so, so okay, that's hard order. for me new order and who was the other band i don't yeah i don't know where you heard new order at Oh, New Order did not make this list. What are you talking about? Who'd you say? I said uh, Tower of Power versus Joy Division. Okay, Joy Division. Okay, new. Okay, that's why I said New Order. Joy Division became New Order from the top. They're the same. Yeah. Ian Curtis died, but the band went on and and, and changed their name out of respect for Ian Curtis. So they're the same. Uh, but yeah, that's why Joy Division. To me, that's that's what it is. No, oh, that's cool. I didn't. I I would have never known that personally. Yeah. Would have never known, but still, Tower of Power, a power man. Yeah. So they created their own genre of funk. <laughs> like they showed me that you could do. You could throw a shuffle and funk, and it works. Right. For me, I just I, I I'm not very familiar with Tower of Power. Uh, um. So what are their big hits? Soul with the cap like. Like Soul with the capital S is probably like the easiest one to find. Okay. Um, Nineteen ninety three. West Coast swinging. Uh, <laughs> Oaktown funk. Like their influence is still being like met by every drummer now who's playing has played some variation of David Garbaldi in something. His name David Garbaldi is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Make sure. That was, I was I said it confidently like three times. Like, man, that would suck if I am saying it wrong. <laughs> but no, I. Like, and every, I mean, we've we've I heard about like, him from a bunch of different musicians. So I think they're one of those bands that is a magician's fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just a fan, of, if you're a fan of funk, yeah. Tower Power was in like was was in a tape deck somewhere. Right. Like. A track. Like everybody, uh, every funk head I knew like, understands A tracks. Yeah, <laughs> like they understand Tower of Power, yeah. the, like the business that Tower of Power was about. And if it wasn't for Tower of Power, we wouldn't have had Lenny Williams, which, like, Lenny is like one of the greatest one-hit wonders ever. But he just he couldn't party. Like yeah. Tower of Power could, like, they could go out do a show, party balls, somehow make it to the next show. Like 
do the gig, party balls, then somehow make it to the next show, do the gig, party balls. And it like, and their shows were parties. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it, yeah, it's a musician's, it's a musician's band. Mm -hmm. and, plus eight, and plus eight of their songs were like, you know, billboards, like top 100. Yeah. Yep. I, I, yeah, I can concede this battle because, you know, I get that. And I just feel like um, it makes me want to learn more about your pick. Right. <laughs> I feel you. What about you, TJ? You got, a, you got, you got one in this one? I really didn't have. I have a dog. Joy Division, Joy Division, the same way you do. New Order, however, I do. I right. do see them differently, but they they became New Order after they regrouped. After, and that yes, New Order to me means something. Joy Division, I just I never. Uh, and then the same, that being said as well, Tower Power is the same way. Like that was not the funk that was on in my household at all growing up by you know uncles or aunts or. My mom even, um, I was listening just to different kinds of folk. It wasn't, it wasn't Tower Power. So I'm, I'm, I have really no dog in the fight on this one. Yeah. If it's, if it's based off of, I did listen to both of them recently mm -hmm. uh, when they got mentioned last night, obviously. And then in previous, you know, after we had uh, the guys from uh, FNAs on last yeah. week. They, they, they were they, talking about their champion. Power, yeah. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. So like I started listening to them then and kind of see what, what the, you know, what, the talk is about for sure, um, but I was, I, mean, I know I know Joy Division is as well. I mean, so if I had to choose based based off musically, then uh, then it's got to be Tower of Power. Yeah, I could concede that. I agree with that. You know, and just just like I said, you know, like you said, you know, we've been keeping on hearing about Tower of Power through uh, a lot of these interviews, man. So, yeah, absolutely. Let's just let's just rock with that. All right. Also, uh, I just threw I threw a I threw a link in the chat just now mm -hmm. uh, to a Tiny Desk performance that they did. Oh, nice! Like, damn. Okay. To this day, There's, to this day, wow. To this to <laughs> this day, and they sound just as good as they did, like then. Nice. Like you talk like when we were talking about like subbing as musicians, like right. sitting in and filling in. There was a sound that you had to be able to recreate if you sat in for Tower of Power. Like you had yeah. to be able to do this. Because Iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Rad. Which I'm going to watch this thing as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get into it. it. No, I am I definitely going to get into it. I want to I, I want to find out more about Tower Power and I'm going to dive into that for sure. All right, got another uh, another difficult one, guys. Okay. Earth, Earth Wind and Fire versus the Bee Gees. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. The elements for me, mm -hmm. without question. I, I for me, without, I mean, without without question, it's the elements for me. And I can discuss this if y'all want, but it's the elements for me. It's for it's BGs for me, man. Go. Cool. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough one. There's no. Yeah, it is. I'm just curious. I want to hear everybody's thoughts or picks first, and then maybe we can get into it. What do you guys? Think? If it's a if it's a battle or not, maybe I. Maybe I'll be a lone man here. Jackie? Man. Uh, <laughs> God, because we're talking about like... I disrespect to Maurice White for choosing otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I got a question. So, as far as... Hmm. Because when we have this conversation of Bee Gees versus like... You know the elements. It's 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 a question of like, are we talking like content? Are we talking like all the above? Are we talking like because right now we're just talking about the what they did in the seventies? Because not so what? Okay, so just for instance, Bee Gees released nine albums in between nineteen seventy and nineteen seventy nine. Um, six of their albums reached the top fifty. Um, the only one that went all the way was actually their last one out, out of the 70s, which was Spirit uh, Having Flown. Um, so we're talking about what they did in the 70s and, and what their impact was in the 70s. Now, just to throw it out there, Top40Weekly.com had the Bee Gees at number 19 in Earth, Wind & Fire 
was number 23. So they're very close. Yeah, they wow. had very they had nine album. albums that they released in between 1979 or 1979 and nine albums. Um that's the way the uh, the way of the world um, mm. made it to number one. Mm. Cool. <clears throat> Man, mm. I, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say the elements. Too. Yeah, yeah, right off the bat, the elements. Like, and here's like the biggest reason for me is like they they were the first band that, and I didn't even know this like going into it, but they were able to one pull in um, a, a religious aspect into their songs without coming across as preachy. Mm. Right. Two, they were able to pull the tribal sounds from raw African musicians, as in it was a percussion. It was a percussion ensemble surrounded by a horn section that literally holds its own weight in its own battle category. It's who had the baddest horn section. Yep. Then you surrounded that with a band, and then you had the songwriting of the genius of Maurice White. Nice White. Um, the ability like, I didn't know what a kalimba was. Mm. I didn't know what a marimba was until right. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like it was literally a percussion ensemble that they could write songs about. And Maurice White was such a genius songwriter; he could literally blend all of these genres together and give you this disco. Off what you were saying, AC, like you know, various groups to like bring all of that to the table like afro pop latin even r&b funk you know jazz like soul like to be considered a worldly band like a worldly band not yeah. just a yeah. band but like a band of different genres like for sure Automatically, yeah. So I my, my, my choice is also Earth Within Fire. Uh, Bee Gees was one of my choices um, going into this. But that, I felt like disco just had to be represented, right? I mean, that's like kind yeah. of what made the 70s, right? When you think of music, when most people think about the 70s music, they're going to think about disco. Like, it's uh, like one thing that everybody thinks, you know, Saturday Night Fever, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, so I thought Bee Gees had to be in there. That, I mean, I don't think that was like a choice that they should not be in there, but. Yeah, and, and what I find fascinating also is that they had they had a run before that. They were the they, first they, ones to like do loops. That yeah, they were the first ones to do loops, and then they would have been on this list had he never found that falsetto by themselves, <laughs> right? But he found the falsetto, right. so he could have been on they they literally could have been on this list twice, kind of, because they were a band before they found that falsetto, and then that sound it became so ingrained in 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 pop culture and 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 was heavily individual on the on the the disco like you were saying my heart wants to say bgs but i think the right answer is earth wind and fire i think that's... yeah i think i can agree with that too yeah. all right let's move uh we can get K ac back here we're yeah. Getting ba yeah we're getting back we're in a second ready, we're ready for this uh the last ones are Probably be the hardest one. So I'm going to go with the next one being The Who versus The Clash. Mm. Damn. And for me, right off the bat, Joe, Tr Joe Strummer is one of my favorite frontmen uh, of all time. Okay. So wow. Really? Yes. Wow. You not you you don't know not for you. Who for me? Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think he's an amazing. As far as those two, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think he's an amazing um, frontman, and uh, I think that he's very impactful in bringing. You know, you you mentioned uh, how Earth Earth Wind and Fire was very um, worldly, and I think Joe Strummer himself as an individual is very worldly. I, I love how he brings. Um, different cultures into his his music and to do that for for a punk musician is i don't he's is anybody else do it like that i don't think so i mean i was trying to think the other day when we started talking about this because i love the clash so much i was trying to think what band out there that came from or, or, or what who was the first band to like put all these different genres into like one style of sound and I couldn't think anybody. I, and the Clash was the first one I thought of. I think the Clash is the first band I can think of where you're bringing a mix of rock, reggae, punk yeah. mm -hmm. into an equation and a new wave, you know, right? Uh, and you know, into the equation. And 
and that uh, that was you know that was what they did. Nikki Heaton on the drums. Um, Those are fun songs to teach. <laughs> yeah, I bet you know, like it's it's different. It's so different. Uh, and the who? I mean, the who's the who? Loudest recorded really, band ever, right? Still, what say what now? Loudest recorded band of, uh, in history. Oh, really? Yep. Did not know that. Oh man, interesting. that's Pete an interesting Moon. little fact. Yeah, like Pete Moon, exactly. Yeah, like, wow, Pete Moon, man, like my was was destroying drums, like <laughs> he literally. The inspiration of Animal from the Muppets, man. That's fucking Pete Moon or Pete Moon. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Who. I mean, you bring up like, you know, Keith Moon and, yeah. and Roger or uh, or Pete uh, Pete Townsend, man. Townsend. One of the best, one of the best guitarists in Daltry. history, Roger Daltrey. What a amazing front man. Great songwriter, man. Like, he, yeah, man. Pete Townsend is one of he, he he. Like, I think a lot of people don't. Or maybe aren't aware, but like all the other uh, really cool rock operas that they did, like the Tommy, and um, that was written by Pete Townsend, man. It's crazy. But then my guess was was gonna be the Clash, yeah, due to the fact that you know, I Oh, yeah, you're good. I think it's like just the Yeah, you're good. The chord, man. Yeah, yeah, it's you're cool. good. You're good. All busted and disgusting. <laughs> so, I, you know, I feel like it wouldn't be like... They, I think the Clash inspired, like, you know, the sound of the Sex Pistols, mm. um, you know, with many others in that, in that era or germ. Because even though they was around the same era, yeah. but you got to think about, like, who did it first? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that Clash is one of my favorite rock and roll bands of all time, just because I like that style of me. I mean, I like, I can't think of another band previous, like I said, previous to them that was putting different genres that I loved and putting it into one. I mean, it was a Clash and it was Poli- the Police. There's the two bands that I can think of where you're taking these different styles of genres and putting it in one. So that for me, that's for me. I think the answer is the who is what I think is the answer, but. That's, that's, that's the reason I would go with the clash on it. Uh, same reason I, we've gotten into a war yet, but. Right. Yeah. Like I would go with. Still having a little technical difficulty. Or actually, I think I'm frozen now. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one not frozen. Technology. No, if like what resonates today? Like so, all like the the whole thing kind of got brought up with the idea of like what the best genre of music was, and in my opinion, it was the '90s. Uh, Boost disagreed, and he thought it was the '70s, '80s. Uh, I think '80s. Yeah, but I keep on changing every week. That's why I brought that up. Earlier. Exactly. So <laughs> the the common theme and joke is we're gonna jab at him for you know switching his picks. Right, right. <laughs> because I mean, it's it's righteous as the. Fe- as the facts change with nature so it makes sense i just love making fun of him about it because he's a big <laughs> first take fan and i gotta hear about it from max kellerman all the time you, you, know what's crazy? Person, Mac? you know what's crazy about that question though man like when you ask a question like that it's like oh man it's kind of like modern world versus old world. it's like all right if it wasn't mm-hmm. for the old school yeah there wouldn't be no new school but then you got to think about like the elevation of new school like yeah. you know the modern the technology time. like yeah just the the advent of technology i was sitting at a table uh this past week with and we're just like we had our phones on the table and we we're just talking about just like how much life has changed because of technology 
And if you think like musically, like, yeah, what would life have been like if somebody didn't figure out that you can run a click track through a synthesized like keyboard? Like, right. what if we never had a like an app click to play to? Like that was found by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like an advent of technology, the metronome essentially was founded off of a mistake in wow. technology. Yeah. Like somebody misplugged in something and it clicked at a certain like rate that a keyboard you could control. And that's how we have a click. That's like, crazy, man. The advent of technology changed music to an extent. Oh, you're back. Hey, guys. Hey, we're all back. <laughs> so did we make a decision on that? I don't know. You were. No, we're waiting on yours. Oh, the okay. Who versus the Clash for you. And yeah, you were deep in thought. So I was I was deep in thought. I was frozen for a moment in time, just trying to pontificate about this. But I think it's going to be the Who. It's a T word. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going with the Who, even though I love the Clash uh, a lot. Nice. Again, uh, it goes back to like you know I I talked a little bit about you know Tommy and those types of things. Uh, their performance at Woodstock. You know, I, I'm an old soul too, and 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 as a kid, you know, I look to the past to like. Because uh, at the time, you know, like, when I, I, you know, like, like I said, you know, what started all this, you know, I'm not a super huge fan of 90s music. So when I was a kid, I was like looking to other decades and genres to find the music that I love. And I, I definitely found it in the who is one of my favorite bands ever. And and I think that a lot of people when you write like you, you talk about best bands ever. Well, everybody goes to the Beatles. Everybody goes to the Stones and they put those two at one and two. And I'm like, how the hell can you to leave the who out of that equation? Like to me, the who's better than at least one of those bands. Well, I chose a clash. We're back to listeners vote again. <laughs> Just, All right. uh, um, well, I originally chose the who, but I'm, I'm going to stick with my guns and go with the clash. So we'll throw that out to listener vote as well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. So are we two two? Uh, is it? Is it? Yeah, that was two two. We're going to listen to vote for that one. Yeah, we got. Uh, what's Heather to saying? Votes, so we have to get. Heather, you're being beckoned. <laughs> I dig her uh, her taste and uh, any 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 music she shared on the, the show clash. with us. I've definitely enjoyed it. I believe it's going to be the clash too. <laughs> yeah, you just speak this way. Hello. Hey. Okay, so I don't think we've heard we've talked before on the show, but we've never seen your face uh, like on the show. So oh. this is great. There you go. Now she can hear you, Boost. Oh, yeah. So I was just saying, like, it's it's great to see you on the show because we've heard your, your voice on the show before, but this is awesome to to, to see you as well. I know. Hey. Hi. Nice to meet Hello. you. <laughs> so we're stuck on The Clash versus The Who. Uh, me and TJ sided with The Clash. Boost and uh, Mr. Whitmill down there. Mr. Whitmill Jr. Mm-hmm. That's right. Said The Who. Your thoughts? It's a tough oh, one. It is. It is. I think i have to go with the clash i'm not in the dog house tonight <laughs> yeah and i'm not mad at that you yeah. know i'm not mad at no, that that's like an almost impossible choice it is though. all of it these really are impossible is. yeah choices. exactly yeah, they've all been pretty tough yeah we've all and been very tough like way i think they're way more uh i not i want to say iconic but they left more of a legacy but yeah the clash also we wouldn't have like so many Nirvana bands or like mm-hmm. I don't know the vast majority of rock that we do now. Right. Without them. Absolutely. I would agree. I definitely agree. Oh, all of these are hard. Yeah. You want to hear the next one? <laughs> of course. Jackson Five, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> oh, that's gonna go, Marvin. Marvin. At least he wrote his uh, tunes. Yeah, it's a little easier for me too. <laughs> I gotta admit. Oh God, the impact of the Jackson Five. It's like great, Jackson right? Was, yeah, they were the establishment of like boy bands. Exactly. Like, they they invented boy bands, right? They essentially, yeah. Part like, of that. Well, yeah, no. At that point, like they definitely were. They were. I I can't. I can't recall. Beach Boys. Uh, well, sure. That's fair. But I'm thinking like as far as like young young kids yeah. being well, able to yeah. make music. And we would have no Biebs. <laughs> right. That's a great point. And oh, he's doing it, and he's putting out his best work now. So. Now. He Dude, had, totally yeah. Himself. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Did the uh, new he, like he has, actually two albums? Like, the last two albums have been fire. Yeah, yeah. I this last one though, 
I is, is amazing. Beeb as a as a musician for the record. Lonely song. Oh, him just being an asshole. <laughs> that lon that lonely song is just incredible. I the first time I heard that I was like, oh my god, I fucking hate this. It's that <laughs> the little crack in his voice. Yeah. Yes. And it's like I it's like Walmart kid. And I was like, oh, this is actually really sad and yeah. so true. Like, yeah. Yeah. But he's doing awesome. I am good kid. Yeah, and but as far as like uh, the the some there's so many um, and they have great songs obviously obviously Jackson Five you know has amazing songs but you know what what's going on is just it's like one of the best songs it has ever to written be one of the best like best selling albums of all time yeah totally like and I think that was the that was the first Motown record where they allowed him to do it his own way which mm -hmm. kind of opened the door for Stevie Wonder to do songs in the key of life his way. Um, Cause at that point in time, Motown was writing all the songs Like Motown just wrote, they all Motown was, was hit writers. They wrote singles. They didn't do albums. So they would just write a hit, give it to an artist, write a hit, give it to an artist. And Marvin was like, no, nah, I kind of want to talk about political stuff, but we're not going to write about that. Well, I'm going to write about it. And that yeah. was like the first time a Motown record, went against the grain of pop yeah and he's like the motown hippie right uh, to that extent yes he was for sure well, which is yeah. cool he like br he bridged the um, he bridged into that next era that seven you know what i mean like uh, this like taking it from the 60s to the 70s i think he was the bridge for for motown to to hey follow me let's 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 take this music a little forward which i think is awesome which is, it's just crazy too. Cause again, like the things that they did with the Jackson five, mm. like Motown, yeah. what Motown gave the Jackson five was like, I can't really put it into words because they were able to demand and get such a level of production out of kids. I teach kids for a living mm. and you know how hard it is just to get a kid to, to mm. step to his right and step to his left and then get another kid to step just to the right and step to the left the same way that kid number one did. <laughs> right. Like they were able to put out like hours of, of a showcase of just these kids, not just Michael being Michael, but as a group. And I was like, that's Joe had them. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. Um, literally. But that was whipping. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went there. <laughs> <laughs> Who was flat? Get my belt. I love the fact that this is this is like uh you know like Motown versus Motown. I like the pairing as well. Jackie, who do you got? Like who against who? Jackson Marvin Five versus, versus Marvin Gaye. Jackson Five. I know. I to go with Even though you know Jackson Five was Jackson Five to me was just very impressive. Like very very impressive like it, it blew my mind but like three number one songs yeah like in the 70s that they didn't write but from a, <laughs> that they didn't write that's true I, you know but when you like i guess for me growing up it's just like dang marvin hit a little harder like had anybody heard a voice like michael zoe at that young of an age no no i mean there was like Kid Phenoms, the only Kid Phenom at that point would have been Stevie Wonder. Right. Okay, yeah. And that was more or less just because, not because of his voice, but because he could play every instrument. Right, like, right. At like the tender age of like nine. <laughs> no, I think that was a land side. I think we all would have chose Marvin Gaye on that one. Yeah, I just, man, that sucks because I really wanted a Jackson 5 versus Michael debate like in the future. That should happen. That, that should definitely happen. happen. I, I I still want to have that debate. Like, Hello, was... versus Jackson Five. Mm hmm. I mean, so I guess we we're still no matter how we look at it, there's gonna be like a like a a, a list of like should haves, and we're gonna like because with the 24, 24 brackets, like there's gonna be like a list of like four that we're all gonna have to pick from at some point. And I I would love for the Jackson Five to make their way into that one, as well as the BG. Gotta have a wild card, so. Yeah, we might have a wild card. You never. <laughs> but it's worth. I would love to have those two in like a wild card scenario, mm -hmm. where we have to like, one of them has to go on. But Agreed. yeah, for this for this debate, it's Marvin. Yeah. God. All right, we got two more left, guys. All right. That's it. 
Cool. War versus Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. War. <laughs> and who else? Bob. War versus War. War versus Bob Marley. Oh God damn it! <laughs> God damn it. I know, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, right, man. I gotta I go. I gotta go, Bob. But same. That's fuck. I, I, I would love. I would love a list of criteria for this one because mm. I want war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want war in this so bad. Yeah, I, I know. But, <sighs> wow. Um, I mean, how would life be if you had never gotten to hear Lowrider? Right. great song saying, like, in, in the in the world of drummers like we understand certain cues and certain like cer- there are certain rhythms on certain instruments that just like signify something and if mm-hmm. i ever hear mm-hmm. somebody's gonna be like it's ah god yeah ah. <laughs> <laughs> i totally get that especially from uh you know percussionist uh sensibility i totally understand that right and then it's, it's the styles, man. It's the, the ability to play every single genre. But, they could do blues. They could do jazz. They could do funk. You know, like I'm, a, I'm this, I, my love for Sublime is deeply connected to Bob Marley's lyrics, which, mm-hmm. you know. You wouldn't have an entire genre of music if it wasn't for Bob Marley. You wouldn't, exactly. you wouldn't have the clash if it wasn't for Bob Marley. True. Yeah. yeah. True. Also valid. True. That is also true. Also valid. Again, it's a tough one. I think I'm just fighting myself because I want war in there so badly. But the answer is Bob in this in this debate. It's Bob. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing about like you think like he's obviously, you know, reggae music still around. But, you know, reggae music is is he put out two albums that are still like iconic to this day. That's, that's what I'm it. saying, that's man. Really like you think of reggae, really you only think I mean, you obviously there's Peter Tosh's and there's there's other people. But you think Bob Marley, right? Like that's just it. Like you think reggae music, Bob Marley. It's you know, yeah, they go hand in hand. They, that's yeah. yeah. And he brought what he brought something into the world that nobody like, nobody looked at music the way he looked at music. He saw music in a completely different way, it's just a completely different way. And his path it is almost it. is almost uh, akin to George Clinton. We talked about George Clinton earlier. Yeah, how he came from the barber shop and make, worked his way up. Same thing for. For Bob, man, he sang in a in a in a doo wop kind of style band, and then got into ska, and then got into reggae. So, dance hall, yep, crazy dance hall, all of it. Well, this is and this is a side thing about War, since like we are we're all agreeing that it's Bob. Yeah, but like War was a band that legitimately was a band. It was just a core band that would front for any front man. Mm-hmm. Like, so when they started, they were Eric Burton's band. And um, if y'all aren't familiar with Eric Burden, like if you like Jimi Hendrix and what Jimi Hendrix came out with in Europe, a lot of that, a lot of the partying and sitting down and wanking on the guitars was with Eric Burden. Um, Eric Burden was a big, 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 big part of the Jimi Hendrix experience sound and mm-hmm. production. So that man's band was war. <laughs> wow. Um. And then they went off and did their own thing when he went to Europe. And then we got to know war, like Cisco Kid, yeah. Rider, and all of that. Like the world is the ghetto. It's beautiful, 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 beautiful music. I love war. True. But Bob is the answer to this debate. Agreed. That was a, that was a, that was a clean sweep with Bob. I think it was. I uh, hear, yeah, it was Jackie? Clean sweep. Yep. clean sweep. Bob Marley. Hell yeah. All right. All right, last one. Two heavy hitters. Two really big heavy hitters. I will. I <laughs> bye, Heather. Get stuck again. Bye, Heather. Thank you, Heather. I said bye. <laughs> so that was my girlfriend, Heather. Nice, nice. Lovely. Um, all right, two heavy hitters, guys. Last ones. Can y'all think of the two that we have not talked about yet? I'm pretty no, sure that they I'm were. Still stuck. I'm still it was. Stuck. It was. It was uh, each of y'all's like number two persons that y'all made on your list. So it's Stevie Wonder mm. versus Queen. Oh fuck! Whoa! God damn it, dude! Damn! Oh, oh fuck! Why? Jesus! <laughs> All right. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Holy crap. All right. I'll, st I'll, st I'll start this one. I'm going Stevie. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> uh, I think it's pretty easy for me at Stevie. Wow. Steve. Yeah. Wow. I'm going Stevie. But I'm going these, Stevie. That hurts my heart so bad. The only argument, yeah, I'm hurting. The only real argument for this one is the genius that was Bohemian Rhapsody. Dude, in my honest, my. I hand, to, hand to God opinion, if it wasn't for Bohemian Rhapsody, like that one song is the reason this debate is hard. Not degrading anything that they've done before or even if they did anything after. I'm just saying like that song was so genius. I would partner that up against Songs in the Key of Life album as to like, how awesome it was from start to finish yeah so just to give you a little a reference so in this list from top 40 weekly.com queen was number eight out of the top 100 bands of the 70s in the night in the 70s between 70 and 79 they released six oh excuse me seven studio albums two of those albums made it to number one in the uk uh, the highest ever got in u.s uh billboards was number three um, so just to let you know that Stevie Wonder finished on this top 40 weekly.com at number one. What? He was the number one, was... number one wow. artist on top 40 weekly.com. Um, and it's because he released eight studio albums, five of the tracks reached number one. Um, Superstition, you are the sunshine of my life. You have nothing. Uh, you have, you haven't done nothing. I wish and Sir Duke. Mm. Uh, in 1970 to 79, he took a home of total of 12 Grammy awards. I was just counting the list of Grammys. This dude, you like Stevie, took home. Like everything. He's received 22 in his life, but 12 of them were between 1970 and 1979. Amazing. Man, this is yeah. so best rhythm and blues. Best pop vocal performance. Uh, he was nominated for Record of the Year, one album of the year, one best pop vocal, best R and B vocal, best R and best rhythm and blues song, one producer of the year, one album of the year, best pop vocal male of the year, best R and B vocal, and all of that was just within the seventies. Yeah, yep. we got I, we, we got we will rock you right. We have you already mentioned yeah, Bohemian nice. Rhapsody, uh, a, a want to break free, another one bites the dust. We are the I champions. Queen, uh, Killer Queen, Radio Gaga, the show must go on. Crazy little thing called love. Crazy so many songs, love. man. So many songs. But I agree. So that was actually their only number one hit was Crazy Little Thing Called Love. And it's like We're not like out of all those songs I US. mentioned, it's the bottom of mine. That's so good. <laughs> the band was also only nominated for two Grammy Awards during the seventies. That's fucking re win, that's and ridiculous. failed to win either one of them. That is insulting. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you also have to remember, like in the seventies, it, it was it was still relatively uncouth to be a uh, yeah. gay. True, true that. And he was out there, so, like uh, like unlike you know Elton at that time was yes. was married to a woman and, and living that lifestyle. So that that. I, I could see that. Um, that was a thing. All right, guys. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Stevie got that one, man. Even though it's a tough one, it's the pill to swallow. It hurt, man. Yeah. This was a rough. This was a rough one, y'all. It was good, though. Because that's the, the great, the beauty of it all is that at the end of the day, man, such, such amazing music, such amazing musicians, songwriters, uh, bands. So it's awesome that we do this so we can highlight these amazing acts, even the ones that didn't make the list. Oh, absolutely. Now, and again, this is uh, so the only ones that we're torn on. Rush. So yeah, we got Floyd. three listener votes. Yeah, yeah. Pink Floyd, Rush, uh, David, John, Bowie, David Bowie, the Elton John, David Bowie, and the Who and the Clash. Oh, wow, uh, man. Heather just killed that one. Sadly, with the Clash. I oh, I mean, if we're gonna take her final vote, we can take her final vote. But I thought we could still get up to the the listeners. I do okay. agree with her. I'm not saying I don't agree Clash. with her. I'll take it. If you want to give me the class, I'll take the class. Oh, you and I are on the same boat. That's, that's yeah, I, I know. I know. Point. I, it yeah, wasn't I, my choice. It was his choice. No, no, I agree. I, I think we should. Uh, I like. I like putting. At least, I like putting in the fan vote. So let's get three in the fan vote. So that's a three. So we. So just to let you know, those three are also going to listener vote. We'll get the listeners vote throughout this next week. 
Uh, hopefully, maybe by or this weekend, maybe or before next show. What do you want to do before Tuesday? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, because people got to listen to it Tuesday, so we'll we'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to get until next Saturday. Yeah, next next Saturday, Saturday, next Saturday, we'll we'll start with with with, you know. Yeah, basically, what you should do is just post it on Hurry Up and Waste Wait uh, podcast page, and then we that way we can share it from there, and we that way we can all uh. Absolutely. Share the one that it's got going, and then we can all do it on our personal pages. Cool beans. Uh, so, so right now we got Tower Power, Marvin Gaye, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, George Clinton, or Parliament Funkadelic, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Billy Joel, Bob, the motherfucking man Marley, and Stevie Wonder. That's a get, that's a great list, y'all. Good luck, nineties. Good luck, nineties. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> oh man, that's stacked. That is so. Next, so when we start talking about 2010s, boost notes, are you going to all of a sudden decide that that's the best genre ever? We'll see, the man. That, that's the thing. Like that's the beauty of all this. Once we get presented yeah, with another deck, yeah, it's possible. I love those both. And of those two dudes. are not going against each other in the first round. Damn it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> like, Kendrick Lamar and J Cole are not going down in this. Like that cannot be round one. Hell no. No. Cannot. That, that, that shouldn't be round one. That shouldn't be. Like. Oh. It's not be round one. No. This has been fun. Yeah. I mean, it was it was uh, a little long. Hopefully we got like I said we'll have narrowed down to the twelve by next week. That's we'll, we'll get down to four, uh, or we'll get down to three, and then the last one will be the wild card that we of the losers or whatever. Yeah. So uh, we'll next week we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do the uh, the semifinals and get us down to that four. So yeah, we got some time. Hell yeah, good job, hey. guys. Thank you so much, hey, Jackie, Jackie, for hanging out awesome. with us. Jackie, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold on, Jackie. One more question for you, Jackie. Put you on the spot. We ask everybody this. Um. Who you listen to right now? What's on your What's on your playlist? Who Who do I listen to right now, man? So, <laughs> of this answer already. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man. Lately, so who I've been listening to? Pleasure. I've been listening to a lot of Pleasure. Brandy. Okay. I've been listening Brandy? to a ton of Brandy, man. Wow. Brandy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Brand. like Brandy, like Brandy, like Ray mm-hmm. J's sister. Like yeah, Ray J's sister. Ray J's okay, sister. Bet. Like, yeah, man. I like, she, I like me some Brandy. She's yeah, she's one of my favorite artists of all time. Like, wow, nice. Like, yeah, that chick. No, I, 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 she's up there, bro. I she yeah. can sing. Like, she can really, really sing. And plus, like, the amount of music that she puts out, it's it's heavy. Like. Mm. All her out. Kobe so. Bryant's prom date. Yep. Right. <laughs> like but, um, uh, the same dude yeah. who wrote uh, a lot of Destiny's Child's material, Dog Child, the producer, was yep. Brandy's uh, producer, engineer, writer as well. So, yeah, top notch. Oh, and also Fila Kunti. Fela Kunti, yeah, Fela Kunti. zombie. Yeah, been listening to a lot of different stuff, not really trying <laughs> to. I know you've been room. hanging around Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm actually about to meet up with him. <laughs> I know you've been around Nick. Hell yeah. Party. Yeah, that's what I've been on, man. Oh, we cool. got, All right, man. I, we I appreciate I got it. Locked down for March. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for swinging through. Uh, well, I guess sitting through. Um, sitting through. Uh, also, where can everybody find you? What's, uh, what, are, what are the socials? Socials. Jackie Whitmill Jr. on Facebook. Um, Sir Juice on Instagram, but instead of spelling it with a V, well, instead of spelling it with a U, it's a V. So, yep. yeah. Um, Sir Juice on Instagram. That's, yeah, those are my main outlets of social media tree. Oh, and then yeah, Twitter, man. Twitter, I'm just like ranting all the time, but I don't think people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I have one. It's there when I'm yeah. going to rant. I have Thank one as well. Too. Don't ever get on it. <laughs> it's the yeah, new man. dark place all right jackie it was nice meeting you man thank you very much for joining us for sure yeah, we really here, appreciate it. It, was, it was nice oh. to hear, hear where you came from where you're from one more thing before you get out of here do you have any uh you got any shows coming up shows coming up um let's see what do i have sorry gotta look at i'm one of those like organizers. if it ain't on my phone it don't exist i understand <laughs> don't exist like if i don't get a 
a notification through Facebook about it or something like to remind me. I yeah, I don't have it. But um, let's see. Mm-hmm. So March twelfth. Um, the project that me and Nick are working on, we have a show coming up on um, March 12th at Revelers Hall I'll in Bishop there. Arts area. Um, you know, the band consists of me and my friend Nick Rothhouse, as we, you know, explained earlier. Um, we're doing like a duo kind of thing where we're bringing basically everything that we just talked about today, you know, all these artists and all these samples and stuff and bring it to life, you know, bring nice. it to the the electric but drummer world of viewing music. So, yeah, yeah it's all March twelfth. I think the show starts at like I want to say nine, nine or ten, nine or ten o'clock. But uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram to know more about that. And let's get it popping, man. Hell yeah, yeah, that's dope. I, I, I think I'm getting it, Nick on the following Saturday. Oh, nice, that's crazy. Like, so yeah, it's either that or the following Saturday. So I, I I want like yeah yeah hell yeah I'm gonna be there. Oh oh man, appreciate you AC man man so great to meet you Chris and yes, DJ. Sir. Thanks man, appreciate it for sure. Man, be safe out there. Shit, y'all too. This is a crazy world we living in. Peace. Peace. Well, folks, this has been the first half of the 70s, or I guess like the first third, I guess, of the, uh, the 70s bracket. I hope you guys enjoyed the debate. I hope your marriages are still intact. <laughs> and let's wait. Get out there and vote for some of these ones we give you uh, some other. Next week. Yes, get out and vote. Uh, next week, we've got Savannah Lowe on the podcast, and she's going to talk about her... Uh, her new project with uh, her new band and can't wait to hear from her and hear about what she's been going through through COVID and she's a voice actor and does all kinds of stuff so um, next week we should be back at Valley of the Kings and uh, can't wait to go back home heck yeah literally home now (laughs) so hurry up and wait and we will see you guys real soon Hurry up and wait.